and the likelihood that you're away from home when a major quake strikes, you're going to want to have an emergency kit stored in your car. Items such as first aid supplies, a portable radio, flashlight can be dumped into a duffel bag or placed into a backpack. You're also going to want to have things such as sterile food and sterile water because these items can withstand temperature extremes of a vehicle without going rancid. You're going to want to have enough of this stuff to make it through at least the first 72 hours following a quake because depending on the amount of damage, you may have to travel that long on foot before returning to your homestead or the nearest shelter. I'm Corinne Wetmore with ROTW News and today on part three of Living with Faults, we're going to look at what you need to do now to prepare for and survive a major earthquake. This includes the action steps you need to take before, during, and after, whether you're at home or away when the earth starts to shake. Right now, before an earthquake strikes, is the time to determine and get the supplies you and your family need to survive. The most important items that uh, folks need to look at and be sure that they've got a contingency plan for, number one would be water. Uh, there's a good chance in an earthquake that the water lines will be uh, broken or destroyed and being able to get to you, uh, it may take two, three, four, five weeks. So water would be key. The second, in my judgment, would be uh, a form, a, a good medical kit where you may, you will, you and I may be dressing wounds and redressing wounds. Uh, meaning antibiotic ointments, stopping heavy bleeding, and those kind of things. Band-Aid kits are okay, but they're not going to be able to uh, deal with serious bleeding, which we hope nobody has, but if you need to be in a position to, to be able to deal with that. Uh, I would say the third one uh, that is often overlooked, uh, particularly here in the city area, is uh, dealing with sanitation. That again involves water, and how are you going to deal with uh, liquid waste as well as solid waste. Other supplies include canned food, flashlights, gloves, and hygiene products. Often people say, well gee, you don't need hygiene and you know that kind of thing, but you know, you know as well as I do uh, uh, what your mouth may feel like in a day and a half and two days and how you'll feel if you don't have any uh, if you don't have a way to at least have what I would call a portable shower. So in this little kit here, you've got a toothpaste, toothbrush, comb, you've got some wet naps and pocket tissue as well as some larger bags that you can use for waste bags. Other items to take care of before a quake include securing heavy furniture and objects, learning about your child's school's emergency plan, and creating a family communication plan. You should also plan now for how you and your loved ones will get reunited after a quake. In the event of a disaster, you want to have two rally points, one right outside your home in case your home is inhabitable and one right outside your community. Um, that way everyone knows where they can get, where they can meet back in place. A lot of times people are separated um, from their home compared to their workplace, so knowing where their family can meet them at maybe in a middle or a halfway point where it would be safe is a good plan of action in the event of a disaster. During a quake, if you're inside a building, drop down and take cover under something sturdy like a table out of the way of falling items. Then hold on till the shaking stops. If you're driving, watch out for falling rocks and get quickly yet safely off of bridges and dams. Then stop if it is safe to do so. Well, if you're outside during an earthquake or after an earthquake, you want to make sure that you're in a clear area, an open area, where there isn't power lines or downed trees around you. Um, if a power line does fall in your vehicle, you'll want to stay inside and stay there until emergency help can, can visit you or attend to your needs as you might get shocked or electrocuted. Immediately after an earthquake, attend to any rescue or first aid needs. Next, turn on a radio, either your vehicles or a portable, and any portable scanner should you have one. You also want to pay attention to the emergency communication network, um, whether it be KBHR 93.3 or 95.1 KFRG the government will communicate with us through messages and letting us know what we're supposed to do as citizens, um, whether to be shelter in place or to a, uh, visit a Red Cross shelter, whatever the case may be, they'll deliver that vital information to us through the radio. When it comes to communicating with your loved ones, the Red Cross recommends using an out-of-state contact as local phone lines will be overwhelmed. 
So if you have an out-of-state contact that you can reach out to and everyone knows that and check in with, that's one way to make sure your family's safe. The other thing is text messaging. Text messaging is just a small sample of information compared to phone calls which are like this, text messages are like this. So you're more likely to get a text message through than a phone call. Well immediately following a disaster you want to definitely assess your situation. If you're in a vehicle you want to stay inside of it and stay out from bridges and overpasses. If you have a down power lines, you want to avoid down power lines and trees. If there is a power line down on your vehicle, you want to stay inside your vehicle until emergency crews come to help you and support you. Otherwise, you run the risk of getting electrocuted. If in your home, you want to assess your surroundings, look at the foundation, see if it's cracked. If the windows are broken, you want to definitely evacuate. Now, if there's just superficial issues like drywall cracks, things like that, you might be okay to stay in it, but it's definitely a judgment call. When assessing your home for damage, take note of other potential dangers such as the odor of natural gas or any hissing, whistling, or roaring sound which could indicate a gas leak. If you suspect a leak, don't light a match or flip an electric switch. Instead, shut off your gas. How to shut off your gas. Keep a 12-inch or larger adjustable wrench with your emergency supplies. Take the adjustable wrench and turn the shutoff valve one quarter turn in either direction until the valve is crosswise to the pipe. After shutting off your gas, do not turn it back on. Call the gas company to have it turn it back on and relight your pilots. If the power goes off and you see a power line on the ground, stay away, especially if it's sparking. Call the police, fire department, or SCE to report the down line. Please do not use candles for lighting because they can create a fire hazard. Use flashlights instead. Turn off all appliances and other electrical equipment except for a single light bulb. The light bulb will be your signal that power has been restored. Turning off appliances helps ensure against overloading, which could delay service restoration. However, if you feel it is best to turn the power off to the entire house, here are some recommendations. Keep the area clear in front of the panel. If you lock your panel, know where the key is. Identify and label the location of the main disconnect inside of the panel in advance of the emergency. Panels vary between manufacturers, but they work and look similar. Again, identify the main disconnect and switch it to the off position. It is important to be prepared in advance of the emergency. If necessary, have a qualified individual assist you with identifying and labeling the main disconnect switch. The important thing for everyone to remember is that by living in Southern California, you accept that you live in an area that is prone to earthquakes. Earthquakes happen here. They can happen anywhere, but they're more likely to happen here, and we have a history of them. So this activity, when we have an earthquake, it's a great reminder for us to do something about that. When people know a hurricane's going to come, they board up their windows. We know an earthquake's going to come. We don't know within days like they do with a hurricane, but we know that one will happen here. If you live here your entire life in Southern California, you are very, very, very likely to experience an earthquake that is going to affect you. Here are some additional resources to get you started on your preparedness plans. You may want to pause the video and write them down. With so much information, getting prepared for an earthquake can seem overwhelming or even expensive. But there are some action steps you can take today. You could take some emergency supplies and toss them in a backpack and place that in your vehicle. Or for no cost at all, you could start putting together your family communication plan or decide on rally points where you and your loved ones will reunite following an earthquake or other natural disaster. The most important point is that you take this action today before an earthquake happens. And when the earth does start to shake, you'll be glad that you did. This is Corinne Wetmore reporting for ROTW News.